Welcome back, everybody. Work, work, work. I have decided that I'm going to do some mounting on what are the evolution of the Michael mounts onto the Ninja mounts. The green scouring pad will always be Michael mounts. The white ones will be Ninja mounts. And I have a few candidates. Now, I don't have any thick rooted orchids to test at the moment with this material, but I have some fine rooted ones to do a comparison with, especially because I have a fine rooted polyanthem here, Dendrobium polyanthum, that is a very thirsty plant. So it's big, it's growing. So I want to try and see if it's good enough for this or if I'm going to have to add a green scouring pad on it. I have a flagellaris here that is nasty because actually it's my time of year to remoss. And to be honest, I've, I don't want to remoss. The ones I have to remoss will stay in moss because those roots have grown into moss. Until the spring of next year, I'm not changing my Sophronides into one of these mounts because the roots aren't used to it. But my flagellaris, you would think is dead but it's not let me show you you see it better once it's the moss is off but it's it's just like it dropped everything just went downhill and i thought right fair enough that's it it's gone and suddenly it's shooting out one new growth here another new growth right by my fingertip there and another one here and it's starting on roots it has nothing to sustain itself and wants to chuck out three growths. Be my guess because the other two that it's tried, they all dried up and went woody. So the flagellaris is actually a thicker rooted orchid, more so than any of the dendrobiums that I have here. It could be a good candidate, but I have no guarantees because I haven't seen any decent roots come out of this one for years. That's how long I've had it and I've been trying to baby it. This one came from Schwerta. Twigs and nothing much else. And then I have another unicum here. So we have an unicum on the Michael mount. I'm going to put one on the Ninja mount. I'm expecting similar results, but we have a comparison. That's the plan anyway. But here then I have my little film keikis that we harvested the other day and my hibiki keikis. The hibiki I will not be mounting. Um, that is going to be another video. I don't want to mount these because the plant does get quite big. In my climate, it would make it extremely, extremely difficult to take care of it. So I'm going to do other things with the hibiki. But I want to get rid of this nasty moss first, even though I'm anxious to get a film off that nasty mount. I'm anxious to be doing all of these actually, I've been waiting a while. But I really want to start with flagellaris. So let's do this. I have already have my scissors sterilized. Everything is ready to go. This shouldn't be that difficult of an operation. Because there's not much going on. But I think this could be a great success on the ninja mounts because the roots are, if we could say one size up, maybe four sizes up. Let's say a Phalaenopsis root is a 10. Then these Flagellaris roots are a five, something like that. And I don't have any, any, any at all <laughs> How this orchid has survived over these years, I have no idea. I cannot, cannot tell you. But she's a fighter. Oh, one. This root doesn't look like much, but there's one. And I have a teeny, teeny little nubbin growing at the bottom. I'm going to wash my hands. And I will show you. You see? It's just a little rhizome. This root dries off at the end, but it's firm. This one is soft over here, but it's firm at the end, but it's coming off. 
to that green point there. And then look, one growth, and very, very interesting, why it's suddenly desperate, desperate to survive. There's a little root nubbin right here. So one growth, two, and three that look like they can make it. I've had two down here that have aborted. So let's clean you up and get you on a proper mount. Now I've considered using this mount again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use one of the ninja mounts because if the roots start growing, this will very quickly be too small. All right, let's get you on there. Poor little thing. Let's get you situated in a manner befitting to your status. Come on, man. Want to make sure she's secure, but not cut any supply off from anywhere. If she's growing, growing new roots, right now I have one right here. That is the one I'm looking out for. But this is very good timing to be doing this. Because there's nothing really to protect except three new growths right at the top. And I can be a bit more radical as to my pulling and securing. When I do the other pieces of lateralis, it's going to be quite interesting. I have an option there that I'll show you in a video because they are growing new roots. The old roots are used to moss, so there might be some kind of adaptation required. There we go. That's number one. Doesn't look like much right now, does it? So I'm just going to leave it like that for now and uh, check out what I need to do regarding the hook because I can use a straight line or I can hook her over. Yes, I'm sharing the water only because I know there's nothing wrong with the polyanthem and the polyanthem is not going in here anymore. I've just put some fresh RO water in here in case I need to keep refreshing the polyanthem. I doubt it, but it's possible. You can see here, I have some root growth, which is great. I'm going to try and protect that as best as possible. This one is also extending and branching, so that gives me hope that if I do damage something to such a degree, there's also new roots coming in at the base, which is fantastic. That's going to give me a lot of room to wriggle and work with. Let's see where we're at. This could take a while or it might just come right off. Off camera, I have a little bucket of bleach. That's where I'm rinsing my hands in. Um, these orchids have been in my collection now. The flagellaris is with me, of course, now two years. This one's been with me since February, I believe. I have not made my own tag yet. Everything coming soon, tag-wise. But let's see what happens with this orchid. It might look brutal, but I'm believing that a lot of these roots around the back are dead. And sometimes just by releasing the back ones, I can pull the orchid off the front. No, I cannot. She is not moving. Look at this. Ugh, it's gross. Let's get you sorted before you get attached here. Very sharp knife. There we go. There we go. Ew, that's disgusting. 
So I've compromised some on the wood here. Not good, not good. But like I said, we have enough at the base. What I may just do here, because of all the algae on this, I may actually just go and be a bit radical and chop off all this top part. All this. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'll save these long new roots. This little dendrobium was not taken care of very well. So we'll work on growing some nice, fresh new canes that don't look like they, they are a toy of a puppy. Because that's what these look like. Like as if a puppy got a hold of it and just took off. All right. I'm going to clean up a bit here. Let's put her where she belongs. All right, it looks a bit nasty. These roots are still alive, even though I did take the decision to chop them off. Some of them are still green in the middle, but there's no point in me trying to massacre what's going on in here. It's so densely packed. And I've got the new roots coming over there. She has been soaking for about two days in the, a mix of calcium, magnesium, and MSU fertilizer with a bit of seaweed before doing this process. So I'll just spray it with some hydrogen peroxide just because of the stuff that was on the mount in the back. It was quite gross. Whew, that smells. That means it's fresh. Copious amounts. Okay, I'm just going to let that fizz and move on to a film. Again, between each orchid, I am washing my hands in a bucket of bleach that is off camera. Now these little guys have been in this tub a couple of days, soaking up some seaweed, a little bit of calcium and magnesium. They seem to be doing okay. I think I'm losing the roots, but you see this little guy? Whoop, I got him out. He was trying to grow in. So let's get going. Now here I've been doing some thinking because the last time I mounted or tacked a film cakeys on a mount, you see how the roots stick out and become like aerial roots? So I was actually just thinking of turning them the opposite way. Turning them around. That was my thought process. I'm not convinced, trust me. And then I have another thought. I mean, I have my adhesive, but that won't work in this case because they are so tiny. I would still need to wire it. 
So I'm thinking like this, each and every individual one. In between one of these gaps and using wire to push them in. So that's what we're going to try and do. In order to build confidence, I shall try it with the first one. It looks like it has a little bit more substance to it. So my thought process is this could be a little bit wobbly. There's too much of a gap. And I already know it's not going to work for the little ones. Am I convinced? Not really. Not really. There's only one way to find out though. And that is to keep going. I mean, there is a certain elegance to the silver. So this time I'm not using the plastic grating to, for support to see how that would hold it in place. And it's much better. See how loose this is? And this one is tight. So that's okay, not using the, the plastic. This might look like overkill now, but I want it to be secure. There we go. Look at them. It should be quite interesting. Let's take the bigger one now. We've done one big, one small, one big. Because as I said, if this works, this is going to be the future of how I mount. So it's the scouring pads and the extractor hob filter or any kind of coarse filter as opposed to using EpiWeb. This elastic is actually really good. It's soft around the structure of the keiki, but I can pull everything into place without suffocating the keiki structure. Well, they look all little classy and sassy. <laughs> okay, now it's just about trying to thread the roots down underneath here. I have space. Just 
takes a little bit of convincing. Snap it. Let's see if it can heal. This is the first time I'm doing this. It's not like I've practiced off camera. So whatever mistakes I'm making here now, I hope to either learn from it and improve on it or the cake is forgive me for them and just grow on but that would be it for now I mean I have considered cutting some strips across the top here but that's not what I want I want to see if they can do without all that because in my case again I'm thinking worst case scenario winter what can I do in winter so as not to damage anything within the orchid and that is my contemplation with everything, worst case. In the summer, it's humidity. In the winter, it's rot. In case I have to spray them and they're not big enough. So that is my contemplation and that's what I was looking at in trying to figure out how to get stop using sphagnum moss and how to avoid having to always re-moss So that is why all this fandangle. Unicum. We have an unicum on a Michael mount. I want to try one on an Ninja mount. Then we have a direct comparison. I'm not cutting any of these roots off because I can use them for added humidity. It's material, it'll stay wet around the base and for anchoring. And we're coming into the hottest, hottest part of the season now. First week of August, it's going to be perfect time to test drive these mounts. She is secure and that is all I ask for at this point in time. Okay, so, um, hmm. It looks a bit funny, but then prototypes always do. Looks aren't everything. Question will be, is it effective? Now I've left roots dangling down at the bottom. I want to see whether they will grow up towards the humidity because based on the scouring pads, this lower section is always wetter than on the top. So we'll see if they respond to that. She is secure, solid. My next test will be to see these roots down here and how they will perform. And if push comes to shove again, I can always place something on top temporarily. Meanwhile, if the roots grow into that, then it's permanent. But I would like to avoid as much humid interference down here as possible because that is my bane in the winter, but I can spray them from the back. So I'm still playing with options, but this is a prototype of Ninja Orchids with Polyanthem, the Unicum, the Aphilum, and there they are. I could only say wish us luck, <laughs> or wish them luck, a little bit of both maybe. We'll see. I like how wet this is. The scouring pad dried quite quickly, that's wet. Ideas, observations, concerns. Anybody concerned about this? Let me know. It will be interesting to see how they get along. And I have a few others to mount, but we'll have a look at them as and when we go with updates and things like that. I appreciate having you here. Have yourself a wonderful day. Continue to stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.